I took an amazing adventure to Greenland with Professor Jeffrey Welker. We met with scientists exploring how ecosystems function in the far north, the Arctic. The winter in the Arctic is cold and bleak, but during a select few summer months, the coastal waters teem with life. Thousands of birds nest along the Greenland shorelines to feed on nature's bounty and raise their young. This is a very carefully balanced system. Small changes in food, human activity, ice pack, nutrients, temperature, and pollution can shift the way that birds relate to their environment, for better or for worse. Keeping a close eye on individual birds and their colonies is a direct reading of how animals birds interact with the precarious world around them. Jeff and I got on board with the High Arctic Institute. Led by Kurt Burnham, the team scours cliffs and islands, delving into the lives of kittiwakes, thick-billed nurs, puffins, eider ducks, GR falcons, and many more. Uh, we work here in the Thule area, and we're carrying on a long tradition of falcon research that uh, initially started in Greenland in the early 1970s. None of, none of us are doing it for a paycheck. Everybody's here because they want to be here and uh, they believe in the work that we're doing and the science that we're doing. And it's just incredible in 19 years to see how much the environment in Thule has changed. When we first arrived here, I mean, it was a, it was a rugged, you know, cold place. And it's, you know, we have beautiful summer days now. I mean, it's, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize Thule from what it used to be. It's just, everything about it has changed. And if, you know, things continue to change, it's very possible that these species could just completely go away. One of the most important seabirds in the high arctic is the common eider. We've come to an island here in North Star Bay that has almost 10,000 birds in an area the size of a football field. And the eiders are especially important because one of the things that's happening today is that because of changes in sea ice distribution, polar bears are moving from harvesting marine mammals like seals and walruses and they're now having to come to places like this where eiders are nesting. These are common eider ducks, chicks. They just hatched. The dried ones are probably 10-15 uh, hours old and the other one just hatched within the last 30 minutes. And As soon as we're gone the female will come back and then in another 12 hours or so they'll probably uh, make their journey down to the ocean where they'll continue to grow up for the rest of their life. And We'll head out here shortly and they'll be happy. This is when it goes from cute birds to hard science. Counting the sheer number of birds or nests is a good start when examining the health of bird colonies. But Kurt and team take the greatest care to capture the birds unharmed to get deeper into the science. They measure all major limbs, including beaks, legs, and wings, and their weight. Nutrition and environmental stresses are big players in these numbers, between years and between locations. They then take feather samples that hold tracers, chemical indicators for what the birds are eating at different times of year. If you can't be with them year round, use technology to help out. Lastly, they draw blood, which they analyze for DNA. These kind of measurements tell Kurt about changes in mating between colonies and the migration of colonies to new areas or the genes that are becoming more dominant with changing environmental conditions. Just like a mystery, more information paints a clearer picture of what is happening in a place that's so inhospitable for so many months of the year. These explorers of one of the most remote places on the earth are keenly watching every facet of birds' lives, using their well-being as warning signs or thumbs up for the health, resilience, and balance of Arctic ecosystems. When you go after some of these bird colonies, like on Saunders Island and places like that, these things are pretty much perfect. It'd be nice to just take some of these places and lock them up, throw away the key, and never let anybody be there. 